Hi, I'm Jeff Kornberg, and on this episode of The Dragon's Tomb, I'm going to be teaching you how to play Jenga. Jenga is the classic game of global supremacy, where players compete to take over the world. What really makes it stand out is the fact that all of its different game components are represented by the exact same wooden blocks, so players must constantly keep track of what each piece represents. To set up, play seven blocks down to create the world map of North America, South America, Europe, Africa, Asia, Australia, and Antarctica. Next, each player takes three soldiers and places them on a continent of their choosing. Now you're ready to start playing. The object of the game is to be the one player who takes over the world. The tallest player goes first. Each turn consists of four phases, the first one being movement. During this phase, you may move one soldier to any adjacent continent, including wrapping around the Earth. It is not mandatory to move a soldier if you'd prefer not to. The second phase is battle. If you have a soldier on the same continent as another player, you can attack them. Each player rolls two dice. This side is one, this side is two, three, four, five, and six. Whoever rolls highest wins, with ties going to the defense. If the attacking player wins, their soldier stays in place and the defending soldier is killed. Flip it over to mark that it's dead. Also, for every battle you win as an attacker, you get to collect one victory card. If the attacking player loses the battle, they send their soldier back to their home continent. The third phase is trade. During this phase, players may enhance their armies by trading in the victory cards they've earned. Trading in one victory card allows you to place one extra soldier on your home continent. Trading in two victory cards allows you to build a raft. On your next move phase, you can choose to move a soldier onto the raft and then move it to an adjacent continent. Whenever you perform an attack on a continent that harbors one of your armed rafts, you will win any ties. Trading in three victory cards allows you to build a wall. Your soldiers can pass through the wall, but other players cannot. If another player moves to it and rolls a 9 or above, the wall is destroyed. Otherwise, their soldiers retreat to where they came from. Trading in four victory cards allows you to build a dance floor. Place it on any continent you control. Dance floors boost the morale of your soldiers and let you roll one additional die when defending that continent. The fourth and final phase is reinforce. During this phase, you're allowed to place one additional soldier on your home continent, but only if you didn't move anyone during your move phase. At the end of your turn, if you ever have three of your soldiers alone on a new continent, congratulations, you've just won that continent. Build the bridge connecting it to your home continent, as they both now count as one landmass. For every continent you win, you gain one nuclear power card. Once you have two nuclear power cards, you may exchange them for a nuclear detonator. When you own a nuclear detonator, once per turn, you can roll two dice. If you get a 10 or higher, discard the detonator and drop eight bombs onto the continent of your choosing, killing everybody on it. Flip them over so you know they're dead. Also, the radiation causes the bodies to form irregular growths, so add one growth per dead soldier. Going forward, any living soldier who moves to that continent gets grossed out and can't move for one turn. If a player ever loses all of their soldiers, their army is eradicated from the map and they're out of the game. However, before they go, the spirits of their people summon an earth tornado, which allows them to mix up everything on the board for five seconds. While the tornado is occurring, all the soldiers, continents, structures, and cards will be completely mixed together, so make sure you keep an eye on which pieces go where. Afterwards, everything continues as normal, but now the gameplay may be more challenging for the less intelligent players who forgot where their pieces are. The first player to gain control of every continent wins the game. All in all, this game is a blast to play. The developers have created a perfect representation of how the Terrors of War can make everything look the same, and they've really demonstrated why so many identical twins are killed in battle. However, it was an iffy choice for them to make a game that less intelligent people will have difficulty playing since, essentially, that's alienating most of the board game community.